Sequential segmental analysis is a widely accepted approach that clinicians can use to describe cardiac segments and connections. This allows for common language and shared understanding between images and surgeons, so there's no ambiguity in describing even the most complex cardiac defects. The sequential segmental approach starts by describing the cardiac position and orientation. There are two aspects to this. The first describes where the heart sits within the chest. In the usual position, the heart sits in the left chest, and this is termed lever position. There are conditions where the heart may be displaced towards the right due to extracardiac structures. If the heart ends up in a midline position, this is termed meso position. If it is displaced even further, for example by a left diaphragmatic hernia, and ends up sitting in the right side of the chest, then this is termed dextra position. The second aspect to cardiac position is the orientation of the apex, in other words, the tip of the heart. The cardiac apex normally points to the left, termed levocardia. If it points to the midline, it's termed mesocardia, and if it points to the right, it's called dextrocardia. The next step is to view the heart as three separate segments, define their relationship to each other, and describe the connections between each of the segments. The three segments are the atria, the ventricles, and the great arteries, which are the aorta and the pulmonary artery. These segments are defined by their anatomical features and not their spatial orientation within the heart. Between the segments, there are intervening junctions. The atrioventricular junctions describe the connections between the atria and ventricles, including the mitral and tricuspid valves. The ventriculoarterial junctions describe the connections between the ventricles and the great arteries, including the aortic and pulmonary valves. By using this approach of sequential segmental analysis, it ensures you follow a logical sequence in describing firstly the cardiac position, followed by the atria, the atrioventricular junctions, the ventricles, the ventricular arterial junctions, and the great arteries. The final step is to describe any associated cardiac anomalies. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how Met Mastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About Met Mastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.